Hello everybody and welcome back to video 18 uh, of this series. Um, getting some lecture notes ready and a practice run. I thought I'd share the videos instead of deleting them while I'm getting the lecture notes ready. Uh, in the previous video we may, got the plan ready for our character movement. We're quite a few steps in. This is like the 18th or 19th video. Uh, so we set up this character and the landscape and so far, a little bit of lighting and sky. And we have these generic movements with the mouse and the space bar jumps. But um, we can't really turn and look around or anything. So we come up come up with a plan for what we need to do on the, on the movement. And we're ready to do it now. Um, we went through the default script and kind of looked at what needs changed. And in particular, we need to change the, some of these input values to have better names, more appropriate for what we're doing, and assign the key values to those. And this is something we can do in any of our game engines. Um, the options are in a different set, different spot, and might have slightly different labels, but it's definitely something we want to do in all of them. So in Godot, if we go to Project and Project Settings, uh, the second tab here is the input map, and they hide the built-in ones, so uh, we can click those, turn those on. You'll see there's uh, joypads and uh, keyboard things already assigned to a bunch of names. So UI accept is enter or space. So I guess um, either the hitting enter or space would jump our character right now, but we can add new actions. And in all of the game act engines, I found that it's uh, it can be best to go ahead and set up the controls yourself. Just take a moment to do that. Give the names relevant to your game and then assign the controls yourself. Uh, right now, we just have the keyboard, but we can. Uh, once we get our inputs set up, we can assign keys from any type of controller we have to it. So. Not one. Uh, UI underscore accept isn't a good name for jump. So I'm going to make one name jump. Just hit enter. It adds it. And there are no controls to it. So the little plus sign here will add controls. And we can search through things. So different buttons on uh, um, pl the plug and play controllers. Things coming in with an HID report. will automatically go for those. Or uh, we can create new, more specific ones later. For now, let's just do the keyboard. We can search through here and find everything. Or on the filter inputs, we can just push the button. So if we just push space, oh, filter by event, push space, and uh, it just accepted that right off the bat. So we have the space on the physical keyboard. Um, We'll want some forward movement. Uh, backward movement. I'm going to do turn left and turn right. So we can search through list and find the one we want. Or if we go to for the forward, hit the plus sign. And a forward is going to be W. Let's do that for now. And we can add more than one thing. Whoops. Didn't mean to hit enter. Uh, make sure you don't hit enter out of habit of accepting things. Actually, I have to click OK because that will change the enter key. And we can see from the built-in ones, we, we are allowed more than one more than one assignment to that particular name. That is consistent in all our game engines. Whoops. So I'll select backward, hit the plus sign, and backward is going to be the S key. Uh, Slightly different in all our game engines, but this functionality will be there, and it is a good idea to go ahead and set up some custom ones for your game instead of other ones. I've found that over the years. So turning left, we use the A key. Keep hitting enter. Press A, make sure it's the A key. And turning right will be the D key. So now we have our input set up. We can come back and do that for a PlayStation controller, or a generic plug and play controller, whatever one we want. Um, you want to make sure and do that. And while there's probably some presets you can use, I, I guarantee that there are plenty of presets you can use in the game engine you're working with. 
Over the years, I've found it's a good idea to go ahead and make new ones specifically for my game. Uh, it helps to clear up confusion a lot. All right, so now we're ready to ask for those in our script. And we kind of looked at it in the example, I'll pull it up again. So is action just pressed? So whenever we press the key, so there's action just pressed, which only counts one time when we press it. Uh, and there's also action pressed, which if we hold down the key, it'll count it every frame. Under project settings, if we look at the build-in ones, UI accept is the space bar or the enter key. But the name right here, just like those names we entered, that's what it's looking listening for. So input, if the, we can switch that to the jump. If the jump input is just pressed, then we'll jump. This one I'm just going to get rid of. A good habit to have in code is um, don't delete a line immediately. Comment it out, make the changes, and then when you know the new ver the new lines of code are going to work, then delete the old one. So just um, a good best practice when writing code. Don't delete immediately. Always comment out a line, make the changes, and then do that. So I want to... Um, Instead of doing that as one vector, I'm going to split it up into a bunch of numbers. So like our Z direction, the forward and backward, it's going to be a floating point number. And I'll just assign it zero to begin with. And then we can check and see if we press our forward or backward button. And that's what we do a lot. So it's going to look a lot like this. So we have that input dot, and we can see all the stuff here. Action press, action release, those are the two we want. Um, that's sort of activating it. If we look at the one above, is action. So the word is there kind of sounds like it's the uh, returning to Boolean. So is action just pressed or is action pressed? I'll go with action pressed. That way we can hold it down. And if forward is pressed, then I want to set uh, Z equal to either negative speed or speed. I'll go with speed first. Um, we have this value coming in. It's going to start as 5. If we press that forward key, then we'll set our speed to that. Uh, otherwise, the speed's going to be 0. I'll do that for each one. So if um, input dot is action pressed backward, well then our Z is going to be the negative of that speed. We'll go the other direction. And might have to come back and adjust which one's positive and negative once we see it moving. Uh, the first one is just a guess. It's like, oh, uh, I forgot which way I said is forward and which one's backwards, whether it's positive or negative, but I know it's on the Z axis. So once we see it, we'll see which one is it should be. Um, and then we can handle our turning left and right. So if input uh, is action pressed uh, turn left, let's just uh, rotate. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different than we did the sun earlier. So we could do rotation y equals rotation dot y plus yeah I'll do it that way I'll do it the same way we did it um, again I'm just guessing whether we need positive or negative I'll do it this way um, I'm preparing lectures here so this is kind of half being made up as it goes uh, and this is the version we already saw so I'll just do it this way there is a built-in method let's turn left by 35 degrees uh, I'm just guessing at a number and guessing as to whether that needs to be positive or negative. And then I'll run a check and see whether uh, the positive and negative sign is backwards and if that seems to uh, need a bigger or smaller angle. And then if we turn, hit the turn right button and notice how we're not specifically saying press the, the D key in this case. That way we can use any controller for it. Uh, we'll do the same thing. 
Actually, I'll just copy this other part. Copy that, paste that in there, and we'll turn negative 35 degrees. So instead of this input, we just uh, that gets the vector, we'll just set our forward and backward. Um, and then we adjust the rotation, and that rotation is on our, our own rotation. So that's going to change that transform basis, which means we um, – which one do we need here? Uh, so X, Y, and Z. So we don't need any X value, don't need any Y value, and we just figured out what our Z value is going to be. That's So we bring this one in, down. I guess I could have called that Z direction or something for clarity. And this one, uh, well, we just set what that is, so we don't really need the speed. Actually, are we, yeah, we're, uh, I'll leave that there. I don't think that line is going to do anything anymore because that is always going to be a zero. Uh, but I'll just leave it in there for now. It won't hurt anything because hopefully from what I just went through, you're not just copying that exactly. You're making little adjustments and trying different things. So I don't want to get rid of that line in case I do come back and try th some things. It won't hurt to have a zero there. But if you decide to make some changes later, they have to put that line back in. So for now, I'm just going to leave it as um, zero equals zero, or whatever it's going to end up being. Oh, it won't quite be that, will it? And this x times this x does not necessarily result in a zero. Um, vector multiplication gets a little bit complicated. So I think that's the changes I want. Let's go see if that worked. We'll give that a run. So if I push W, oh, it's going backwards, and it's kind of slow, and S is forward. So that positive and negative was backwards, and the speed needs to be higher, but we put that in the inspector panel. And if I, well, wait for sunrise, now push D, oh, that's way too much, way too fast. Uh, I think it's turning left way too fast though. Um, so let's go back here and adjust this. So uh, this one need, forward needs to be negative and backwards is positive. Uh, and then left and right will turn 35 degrees. Oh yeah, need that delta because it's turning 35 degrees per frame, not per second. So. I need this parameter that says what fraction of a second we want to turn that 35 degrees at. So um, a fraction of 35 degrees for the turn, and then over the course of a second, it should add up to 35 degrees. Let's give that a try. So, okay, W is forward, S is backwards, D turns slowly to the right, and we have a new forward, so now we can go that direction. Our camera's coming with us. That looks good, except for the speed is way too slow. Maybe um, 12. That's probably still really slow. But it'll. we can hone in on a good number later. So now if we start running around. Yep, 12 is still way too slow. Let's, um, let's see what 30 does. We have a huge level here. So now it's just a matter of finding the right numbers. Oh, and we forgot to check jumps. So space bar jumps. All right. Wander through the night. That's still a really slow speed, Dad. I'm going to go back to what this was. I'm going to say time speed here. Time speed here. And then I'm just going to set this one to a negative one or a positive one. 
and then we'll multiply by speed later. I think that's what it originally had. Okay. That's a better speed. But our character's moving around and turning, our camera's following with it. The jump does not match the running speed, so now let's try 12 and see if this gets us some good movement. So if we turn this way and start moving, okay, nice little speed. Once it's, we'll adjust the speed to match the animation. That's the real one. That'll be the, uh, that'll be a step coming up soon. I've decided to stop trying to predict what's going to be in the next video. Could probably jump higher than that. And then that'll work for now. So maybe, uh, let's try eight. Let's see what that gives us. And. I think I'll go with these for now because the rest of it's going to need adjusted to match the particular animation. Okay, that's a serious jump on that character. Um, Superman style jump, but we can run around, move our character, see what's going on. Time passes day to night. So it's progressing. It seems to be progressing nicely. Um, and those particular speeds and uh, the velocity we're moving at and the rate we jump refining those numbers probably needs to match the thing but that gets the movement so i'm going to delete that original line because i don't need that anymore and that'll be it for this video we'll come back and um, um the next step is probably to use this script if we're moving we want to switch to the walking animation and if we're not moving which I guess this would be moving. This would be not moving. If we're, if we're moving, we want to watch, see the walk animation. If we're not moving, we probably want to see the idle animation. So that step is coming up soon. I will see you in the next video.